pal of yours. Well, here we go with my first look at the Xbox Series X. I've had the console for a couple of weeks now, uh, and I thought it about time to just put a video together for you guys who might be uh, playing on your console or looking forward to getting hold of one, just some initial impressions of some of what I've seen so far. So I guess we'll start off with the unboxing. Uh, it's very nicely packaged. Uh, you open up the box. It's presented very nicely with a console almost laid out there for you. It's uh, the console design itself is is you know basic in its own way. The, the cube and it's it's uh, quite weighty, but not the heaviest console. My original Xbox was was heavier, so it gives you an idea of the original weight of that system. Uh, but it's still a weighty piece of kit. Uh, it's quite tidy there's not much in the box uh, the power supply the huge blocks that we've had with virtually every xbox to this point uh, is inside uh, and uh, it's it's a very tidy system it's nicely packaged and put together there and i was just looking forward and admiring the look of it if you like looking forward to trying it out uh, the look itself is is basic it's about as basic as a nondescript as a console can be and take it that what you will i think there's a part of me as a gamer that likes to see a console that's got a bit of character but this really is something to look as invisible as possible in your living room or whatever setup you've got there merges with the other black boxes and bits and pieces you've got around in terms of equipment so that's a bit of the unboxing uh, very straightforward and I haven't gone into any detail on that because lots of people will have done it already uh, on to the games you've got to download a few games I'm still going through the process of downloading some games I mean some games have patches uh, you know we'll start off with say Dirt 5 Dirt 5 looks fantastic uh, on here everything runs very smoothly very impressed with the visuals and the look uh, and it's a pleasure to play this on a 4k OLED TV really does fit the part and it just shows you that it's a PC a high quality PC in a box but I was even more impressed with WRC 9 because I play a fair bit of WRC 9 now we'll just add I've been getting stuttering issues on Dirt uh, 5 on my PC that I've not been able to get rid of uh, despite trying to force vsync i've not been able to get rid of it and i found that obviously the xbox series x version runs better the uh wrc9 runs runs better as well it runs a much higher detail level than my pc uh, surprisingly my gtx 1080 pc powered pc and my gtx uh, 280 super uh, which which runs well but there is just something about the fluidity on the xbox series x version that never ceases to amaze and i play it with a console controller now and it transforms the experience and if you compare to the xbox one x version or the standard xbox version i may have a cut on the screen i may not but there will be a separate video the difference is night and day on that so uh, i'm always impressed with what developers are managing you know even when you look at a, you know look at dirt 5 on the original Xbox, it's impressive what Codemasters were doing with the with the uh, Xbox One. I say the original Xbox, the Xbox One. We get mixed up with all these names, don't we? Xbox One. Uh, but uh, again, you know, seeing it running with all D-cell, 60 FPS or 120 FPS really brings that smoothness home. So both games very impressive. I ran a few other games as well, Daytona USA, because Daytona USA, it works, it works any excuse to play a bit of Daytona. I think something's a bit more impressive also is Assetto Corsa. Uh, and it's a good example. You know, it ran at nearly 60 on the original Xbox, but now uh, on the Xbox Series X, it's running at a perfect 60. I haven't seen any drops of any kind, and it really helps with the fluidity and the gameplay and stuff like that. Uh, and so in terms of general gaming, I'm still downloading various different games at the moment. I play a fair bit of Doom. I can say Doom runs really well as well. And of course, Forza Horizon looks the business. Forza Horizon, in a way, doesn't necessarily impress me in the same way you know in the xbox series x it was already quite impressive or pretty impressive there with the performance modes uh i can't say it necessarily blew me away in quite the same way as dirt and uh wrc they really were significant upgrades so in the racing space which obviously that's the majority of what we cover at the moment i'll be comparing the old games to the new games on a videos to come I'll be looking at the various improvements there. And of course, we can look forward to next-gen upgrades of games such as Ride 4 
uh, and possibly MXGP 2020 and Monster Energy Supercross in the months and uh, weeks to come. So look forward to seeing that to see what we can look forward to again with the evolutionary leap. Uh, in terms of menus, uh, menus haven't changed. I found that a bit disappointing. I would have liked a new experience for the Xbox Series X. The fact that it is identical to the other Xboxes, I find personally a bit dull. I uh, would have liked to have seen a bit more there, a bit more creativity, a bit more vision. Uh, it lacks. I don't like these menus anyway. I've always found them to be dull and square and basic and lifeless. Uh, and I, I just artistically and creatively speaking, it's nothing like it felt years ago. Uh, in terms of menus, I mean, I quite like the blade system there was on the Xbox 360. And I like the initial uh, 3D when you could just swipe through and it would smoothly swipe through the games on the Xbox 360 before they changed it to the page system, which never felt as good. Finding indie games and various titles on the old menus also felt a bit easier. I found a lot more indie titles of interest these days. It does feel a bit more of a slog getting past the, the big publisher titles to find other things here and there. It never feels as flowing as easy as it used to. So I, I do feel that the menus could have done with an upgrade and it would have been nice to have had something new to explore with. But I've no doubt that, that Microsoft will update that in time. This was just the fact of a launch feature. It was... Um, it was a key thing. A lot of people talked about the control pad. The control pad is very small. Uh, you know, f for my hands, it's it's very small. I'm 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 a bit of a giant anyway, but for my hands, it is very small. And uh, yeah, I can't say I know it's massive. It's it's all been tightened up a bit. It all feels a bit a bit more solid, a bit nicer. There's rougher, grippy bits here and there, but it's an evolution of the Xbox controller, really, which is nice enough. I just wish it was marginally bigger. That's just my only issue there with this control pad, but for many of you, it will be fine. That's just a personal preference. Uh, and one area, if I do have an area of disappointment with the Xbox Series X, is with the Blu-ray drive. Uh, the Blu-ray drive is shockingly loud, to a point of, it's utterly pointless watching a Blu-ray film with this with this system to me. I, I just can't watch it. If I don't have headphones on, there's no point. And I don't watch films with headphones. Uh, my Xbox Series X was due to be, uh, Xbox One X, sorry, was due to be retired uh, from the living room Blu-ray player and app player. But it looks like it's going to stay there. It's funny, I had the PlayStation 3 there for many years, eventually replaced by the Xbox One X. I was hoping the Xbox One X would be replaced by the Xbox Series X. It doesn't do that. It's not, in my eyes, it's not a competent Blu-ray player. And it's one of those things that not many people have highlighted. And I remember testing it out and I couldn't believe the noise when I put in a 4K Blu-ray. Uh, it was, you know, bzzz, it was literally a plane taking off in the corner. And I, I was uh, shocked and disappointed. I went on to witch.com to say, and they actually had a report on it there talking about the noise of the blu-ray player and i've since seen john from digital foundry talking about it as well the disappointing noise and performance it's almost like an add-on that they just put a cheap one in there tick the box and it's that's it you know we're happy with that as it stands so very disappointed with the blu-ray player it's it's and and it sort of takes it away from being my my living room default machine now because i need the xbox uh, 1x to continue doing that job in playing blu-rays so a bit disappointed with that i think that's the only area for me that it's not the complete system uh, the the system obviously is vertical uh, well i say you can lie it down obviously but pr pr primarily it's a vertical system the heat comes out the top the heat is uh, uh, if, well I'm, I'm quite surprised at the amount of heat that comes out of it really it's it's blowing like a chimney most of the time and it's silent running i will add it's completely silent running as a game console not not a peep but uh when you're using it the heat when you're playing games after a amount of time it's like a heater you can warm your hands up on it you're like oh it's a bit chilly today i'm just going to use my xbox series x to warm my hands up it, it, and that's no joke it really is that 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 hot on top it, the, these things give off a lot of heat surprising it'll be interesting to see how they perform in the summer you know it's okay during the colder winter months let's see what it's like in the summer this thing's really going to be heating up your living room when you don't want it to so uh, the both and i'm sure that applies to both new consoles that i haven't been able to get my hands on a ps5 sadly 
But uh, uh, Xbox Series XN, obviously, tremendously powerful console. Uh, it's what we want from a games console. It's what we've, you know, what I've wanted. I was disappointed with the Xbox One. Uh, you know, generally, the last generation of consoles I've been disappointed with in general. And now we have a console that can power 60 FPS, high quality gameplay. It can increase the performance of all the games we've ever had in the history of gaming. And I look forward to seeing actual Xbox Series X games dedicated in the months and years ahead. So that was it for me on this quick video looking at Xbox Series X. I will have some separate comparison videos on various different games on the old Xbox and the new Xbox in the months and weeks to come and you can look forward to that on the channel and do let me know what games you would like to see or games that you've come across that you feel have benefited from Xbox Series X you know surprise titles I'm really interested to know if you guys have been digging around in the history of games and you've come across something that you think wow that improves that title a lot more than I was expecting I'm really interested to hear your views on that but um, that's it from me on this video looking at the Xbox Series X. Plenty more to come and there'll be more from me very soon. Hello viewers, well thanks for watching the video today. Do like and subscribe, it supports what we do. Do become a YouTube member. YouTube Patreon supports all of our content you see on the channel and of course lots of gaming from retro to modern games. I love it all in terms of racing action. So click on one of the two videos just there to find out more.